In the third chapter of the game of life and how to play it, she wrote about words and how they influence one's status. Let's get to know the power of your words as we talk about this chapter's key points. Once we are made aware of the power our words hold, we tend to be very cautious on the things we say. Those with high understanding of the law of attraction watch how they converse with other people so their words do not return to void. This principle is quite simple to understand just by knowing that we make laws for our lives constantly through our thoughts and words. Whatever we say will eventually come back to us. This chapter also tackled the logic of superstitions. Superstitions can come in many forms like lucky charms, pendants for well-being, and many more. This logic states that the charms, horseshoes, or rabbit's foot actually have no power, but our words and belief in it does. Since we speak about how lucky it is and believe it, we create expectancy in the subconscious mind and attract a lucky situation. An example of this is the man who kept on saying he always misses the car. He felt like every time he stepped out, the car is already gone. He was like this for many years. However, his daughter said the exact opposite. She said that she was always on time for the transportation she needs. True enough, she never missed one. Since the man believed and spoke about the superstition that he was always late, it manifested in his life. Fortunately, the logic of superstitions do not apply to individuals who have advanced spiritually and are knowledgeable with the higher law. This can be seen in the comparison Shen wrote about in this chapter. In scenario one, she had two men in her class who were into business. During the first months, they were successful but ended up failing after the next. They assessed their situation and Shen found out that instead of making their affirmations and looking to God for success and prosperity, they were believing in the lucky monkey they both had. They were then asked to call on the law of forgiveness so that their mistakes are neutralized. On the other hand, scenario two is about a woman who saw a horseshoe out of the blue one day. She picked it up and said that it may be God's sign for her to keep her faith up. She was filled with joy and hope and later on made a wonderful demonstration. Both of these scenarios have lucky charms involved, but they have two different endings. One was failure while the other was success. What set the two men for failure wasn't the lucky charm, but the fact they were depending on the monkeys alone. While the woman recognized the power of the horseshoe that was made possible through God, this means that we don't necessarily have to throw away our lucky ornaments, but instead recognize that its power comes from the one and only God, and the object simply gives a feeling of expectancy. Florence Shen even became very personal as she shared that coming to terms with this principle was hard for her too. But later on, she understood that in order to change in the subconscious, she must first believe and assert that there is only one power in this world, and that belongs to God. Through this, she was convinced that there aren't any disappointments but only happy surprises. She also stated that fears give way to the belief in two powers, as good and evil, instead of one. As God is absolute, there can be no opposing power, unless man makes the false belief in evil for himself. The law of non-resistance was also mentioned in this chapter through the story of the woman who feared ladders. She always insisted that she's never going to pass under a bridge in her lifetime. But Shen said to the woman, To show you believe in only one power, God, 
and that there is no power or reality in evil, walk under the next ladder you see. So no matter how intimidating it was for her, she did it, retraced her steps to confront the ladder she had avoided, but the ladder had vanished. This teaches readers to face a situation fearlessly and expect it to fall away on its own. Since we're talking about the spiritual realm, it is important to know that invisible forces are constantly working for a man who consciously or unconsciously pulls the strings. Our words have three main purposes, heal, bless, or prosper. Whatever we say, we also attract. Those who always release words of sickness are bound to attract it, while those who speak of abundance will experience no lack. This is the same for the diseases we have. Even a metaphysician knows that all disease have mental correspondence. Every disease is caused by a mind not at ease. Hence, to heal the body, one must first heal the soul. Our body can be cured and transformed if only we save the soul or the subconscious mind from negative thinking. One way of healing our sickness or unhappiness is through verifying whether we have violated the law of love. Besides, this game of life operates on the love one another principle. For instance, this woman who has a skin disease got kicked out of her job because a man was jealous of her and plotted against her. Naturally, the woman felt bad, but instead of acting based on this feeling, she spent silent nights and prayed to God that she may not hate the man. She did this for two straight nights, and on the third one, she got healed from her skin disease. She dealt with the situation with love for other people. Since love is the fulfilling of the law, the disease that came from the subconscious resentment was wiped out. The reverse of this situation can also be seen in another story. There was a woman who got poisoned from an oyster. When Shen asked her who's wrong with her, she replied, 19 people. This gave Shen an idea that it wasn't really the oyster that made her sick, but her mind. The chapter talks about how continual criticism produces rheumatism, as critical inharmonious thoughts cause unnatural deposits in the blood which settle in the joints. The woman's unforgiveness and criticism for those 19 people caused her to attract the bad oyster too. The external disturbance of her body exposed the mental disturbance she had. Enlightened people know all these laws and use it in their lives. Since they have a good grasp of the power of their words, they try to perfect himself upon his neighbor. They try to send out goodwill and blessing to everyone. Once the blessing is given, other people will no longer have the power to harm you. As what this chapter states, goodwill produces a great aura of protection about the one who sends it. That concludes the chapter 3. Always remember your thoughts have the power to change your life. Till next time, thank you for watching.